It's very nice to meet you. I'm Mara Requez. You're the chief executive of Aconite Productions, and you are also the co-writer and co-producer of Aquarella. So um, tell me a little bit first about Aconite Productions and what they're about. Great. This, uh, can I, thank you so much, Yvonne, for organizing this and for your vision on this program, because I think it's essential and very important to show the program that you actually create, create, curated. And also, I'm honored that you uh, added Aquarela as part of it. So thank you. That's great. Um, so Aconite is uh, a company that I started uh, 10 years ago. Um, my vision was to focus on international creative documentaries. I believe the creative documentary is possibly the most challenging and difficult art form that exists. If you are to capture the present moment and to follow a story in real time, I know many directors, incredibly creative, who actually start in documentary and turn into fiction because it's a unique art and you really have to know how to connect with the present moment, with the present time and how to capture that the best way you can and follow stories usually for a long time in order for, it, for them to work. Um, then it's not an easy task. You need the talent and you need the time and you need the finances to do it properly. <laughs> so at a point where everybody is going like fast, 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 you know, let's produce information, you know, let's use from, you know, short videos, communicate fast, communicate quickly, produce, produce, produce. I guess I felt that I wanted to go into the opposite direction to expand into what we have lost. And that is our connection with the big screen and our connection with time and with also doing things creatively, um, but in a way that we can actually, you know, actually enjoy, you know, that we can actually truly and fully connect with what we're seeing, with what we're watching. So, and, and I think it's just with this fasting, fastness or this way that we produce and continuously produce in media, we cannot this is, we don't feel sensitive anymore about what we watch. So um, I think it, it, it's like when the world is going too fast, internally, the humans are really taking a long time to catch up because we can't process all this information. And I think that relates to where we are today. You know, the anxieties, you know, the mental health, the, the difficulties that we're experiencing. And filmmaking and cinema is such an amazing tool to actually allow us to just be present. So I'm excited that you are actually there, you know, showing the film as it should be in the cinema, in a space that we can actually just be. Um, so that is the vision of Aconai, how to sustain it. Um, well, we have been operating for a long time. It's not easy to finance creative documentaries, especially, you know, when you think in an ambitious way, how to do it well. Um, and on subjects that we feel, feel passionate about it, because I think that's very important. Tell me how you uh, became involved with the film project Aquarella. Aquarella was initiated by Aconite. It was our idea. Um, we wanted to make a film. Um, they will have two remits. One, that it will honor cinema, which is a craft that, especially in documentaries, we are losing because we're able to use more and more uh, the immediate mobile information that I think is a great blast and I'm not knocking it down, but I think we are losing craft and there is no many filmmakers like Kosakowski, for example, that we work with on this project who can actually use and craft cinema um, in a way that actually honor what cinema originally was created for. So that was one thing, it's a legacy to cinema, but above all, to leave a testimony of where we are today and the planet. I think, uh, you know, as you watch Aquarela and you pay attention, then you'll see, you know, the following the journey of water and allowing water to talk through the screen, through the amazing sound that was created. Then you, it, it, it gives you know, an, an idea of, or hopefully allows people to experience or see, even in a hundred years time, what is happening in the 21st century here on the planet. So 
I managed to contact Kosakowski at the beginning, you know, with the perspective of water, why do we, we say, why do we don't make a film about water when I talk to Kosakowski? And he immediately say, you know, I'm not interested in making a film about water, you know, no, 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 it's just no. But we connected with each other, you know, we knew that if we were to work as a team, um, we could do something. And that was part of what I felt my job was, how can I best serve, you know, um, this gentleman with the energy that he brings into this world, with his creative capacity, how can I best serve it to make an amazing film that people will always remember? And I just say to him, okay, so people call you the Rembrandt of documentary making. So forget about water. Let's not, we don't do anything connected with water. Why we don't do aquarella? So we use the screen as a canvas and we use the lighting and water to paint on it. And let's see where this journey takes us. And immediately he connected with that. You know, he's a creative man. So he said, wow, I can see Aquarela. Yes, uh, one of my films in my repertoire, repertoire. So that is when the conversation started. And I didn't know where we were going, you know, because it was a journey that, you know, it was still to be discovered. And I entered into it a little bit naive because obviously to work with Kosakowski, you obviously, you have to really learn the craft of how to really produce a film that is going to serve cinema and to do it in the present moment, everything that you'll see will capture it as it was, as you witness it, as we witness it and through us, as you are going to experience it today in the big screen. So, and Kosakowski say a couple of things. He say, okay, there will be water in every frame, but I don't want one single splash of water on my screen, on my lens. So you are going to witness that, a film that we went through the most difficult situations, the most difficult locations. It was extremely complicated to produce, but you'll not see one single drop of water in any, in any shot. <laughs> so we managed that, at least I can say. <laughs> I was going to ask you actually about the challenges because there obviously was some very difficult locations and dangerous as well, weren't they? And there were quite a lot of risks, I should imagine, filming in some of those places. Yeah, I mean, it's a journey that when you sign up for your, the journey, you just do it. Um, I guess that's how I work and I operate in everything I do in my life. I sign up, okay, let's do it. And let's try our best to make it the best possible way. It was a big risk, yes. You know, I went with a team to most of the locations with a section of a couple of locations. I was there all the time. It was a very difficult journey. <laughs> you know, we, we, not only because of the locations we were working, we needed to, to, to reach, but also because the technology that we were bringing into these locations and the team required to achieve it. Um, we agree also with Kosakowski from the beginning that the film will be shot at 96 frames per second. That is because we wanted to catch up, you know, with the technology of how do we experience cinema. And I'm delighted to hear that you're going to watch 48 frames per second. That's fantastic. You know, unfortunately, the projection technology hasn't catch up, so you're not able to see a 96. But I totally tune in with Kosakowski. You know, he say, you know, we need to be 96 because that is where cinema is going, you know. And we didn't have the budget, the budget of Christopher Nolan, for example, you know, to make his big film. But we so we try what we can with the resources that we have to make it in a way that then it will also be, make history in a way within cinema, because I think it's the first documentary shot at high frame rate. And you're not going to watch a 96, but that is what you know we're aiming for. You know, the in, in the way you know the cinema is being experienced shooting at high frame rate change the way we actually see things. Um, and that's really, in, in, specifically in this project was very important um, because it's water and, and it's fast and, and it's changing continuously. So the more information that every frame and every second has, the more you see. And when you hear it, not only at high frame rate, but in a Dolby Atmos theater, it's just extraordinary. I love it. We had an extraordinary sound designer who was with us from beginning to end. He not only recorded the sound, but he also mixed it and was with us to the end. He said, every time I listen to Aquarela, I go like, wow. Well, I was going to mention the, uh, it's not just the visuals, it's the actual immersive sound. And it's, I, I also wondered the use of Apocalypse, the music as well, how that was incorporated in the soundtrack. 
how, how did that come about? Was that your choice? Was it Kosakovsky's choice? Wow. I mean, the music was a, this, such a difficult part of the project to handle because we try and Kosakowski listened to, I can tell you, possibly over 200 composers. None of them will fit aquarella. And Victor will say, look at it. Music can destroy it. The sound can destroy it. You know, something that looks amazing, suddenly it could look totally banal. Classical music was not working. Any music, you know, I have the most amazing composers. Seriously, I'm not boasting. I talked to extraordinary people. Every time I would talk to them, I was going like, yes, yes, yes. You can imagine who is coming on board and I would be so excited. We listen to the music, even the musicians themselves, themselves. The composer would say, no, it's not working, it's not working. So, but Victor from the beginning said, the scene at the end um, is the only one he could not live without music. And it's the one that you see, I'm not going to give you away, but it's the last, <laughs> the last scene. Um, that is, it's a very beautiful moment because it's like kind of bringing everything back. Look at this amazing water where we left. That's basically what it is about. And the piece that he had from the beginning was from Apocalyptica. And he said, this work, we need to find this. We need to find this. And we couldn't find it. We were looking especially in the UK for an artist who could do it. But we tried different ways and it didn't work. And then we say, why are we looking for so long? You know, let's try Apocalyptica then. Suddenly, we, we have this amazing guy, you know, Eka, who I totally adore these days because he's really, you know, sitting down with Kosakowski for just two weeks. The two of them just work it out. You know, it has to be heavy metal. <laughs> it has to be Apocalyptica because it is heavy metal, it is hardcore. The film itself was telling us and we were not paying attention, but it just solved itself out. It's like when you are working in a project like that, there is no necessary guided by the rules that your mind and your brain is telling you, but what, what it needs to be. And this is a hard one for us human to contemplate and to understand because we are so used to, to what the mind is saying but when you're working with artists, you know, you have to put that aside. It's not necessarily what it makes sense. It's what the project demands, what the project's telling you. And in this occasion, specifically, what water is saying? Because this is a film that it gives water an opportunity just to be, to talk. And it talks, when it talks, it roars. And when it roars, then yes, Apocalyptica was the right uh, artist to have on board. And that's how it worked. But it was not an easy process, I must say. There's no voiceover. It's it's very experiential. And you know, how do you think it will help uh, the audience gain an insight into how they perceive the environment and um, even climate change? Experiential. I think you say the right word. This is not a film that you're going into thinking, oh, that's you know, with your cognitive side, trying to understand, just allow it be an experience what the film is and tune in and submerge into it as it is and see how, what that's for you because everybody who is sitting for two hours um, in a space, you know, just to experience a big screen, you know, you need to tune in and allow yourself, you know, to take it in. Um, but in terms of what you want people to take on, I mean, I, I don't know because we all obviously, every individual has, uh, uh, um, their own personal reasons why you know they come and see a film like this you know I cannot comment on the individual experiences but overall I think it's so important um, that we see where we are today you know the main thing for me in terms of this project when when I see it today is like can we humans see where we are can we see how small we are when we put ourselves in the context of the planet and beyond we are insignificant that's the truth we are significant, magnificent in our own way. But on the other hand, physically, we are totally insignificant. Our ego is nothing and it melts away in the presence of such an amazing natural resource like water. The power of water, you cannot contain it. And forget about it, the, um, you know, we need to do something to save the planet. No, 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 the planet will save itself. The planet knows how to do to keep itself in one piece. The one you need to be safe is the human species. This is about us. This is about thinking of where are we today 
in the 21st century. What are we doing? What is our species is doing? An amazing successful species that really is trying to take over the planet. But the planet in any second can just get rid of us. We are like the virus. The water can wipe us away. No one ever even remember, possibly. <laughs> That's the truth. Because the planet has to keep himself in one piece. And we become like the virus. We have become the planet's virus. And that is what happens, you know. We may be washed away. So I'm sorry, it's no bad news, but it's really to put us in the perspective of, you know, who we are as a species and how egotistic we have become to be so unconnected and unplugged what was around us. And the consequences are dev devastating because that's what we, we have. We will witness it in a film like Aquarela. So I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much, Amara.